Hey Jay. Hey, what's going on? So, why is it that exercise and dieting is good for you, but for some reason, if you do too much of it, it's bad for you? Well, too much of anything is bad for you, for one. Uh, when you're talking about like, specifically like overworking yourself? Yeah, like maybe going from four days to six days, five days to six days. Oh, like working thing, out. You know, or like having no days of rest. Yeah. Okay, so you're working out. Um, rest needs to be incorporated into your exercise plan. Like it has to. It's it's absolutely vital. Like there's there's very specific reasons why you know, in between sets, you actually have some rest time. And I'm not just talking about that rest time. I'm also talking about recovery time for muscles, you know, when you're overworking them, right? So say if you're doing strength training, right? And you're working close to your rep max, okay? You're literally pushing your muscles to the limit and they need to repair. When they repair, they get stronger, right? That's the whole purpose of that. So uh, rep max, uh, if you don't know what a rep max is, that is the maximum amount of weight uh, a muscle can lift at one time. Uh, that means if you can lift it again, that is not your rep max. But if you can only do two, then you're close to it. And strength training usually works towards um, your rep max. So again, like overworking muscles, like it's gonna tire out. Imagine like breaking something down and then rebuilding. See, um, what's a good example of that? Like a house? Or, or like a, yeah, a house. I was going to say a spider web. Oh. Say you swiped out a spider web. Well, it takes time for that spider to rebuild its web. Okay? And then you swipe it down again, and it's got to rebuild again and again and again. Now, imagine doing that in the middle of the repair. Right? So you swipe it down, and it's like starting to come up. But before it can finish, you swipe it down again. It gets to a point where that spider will eventually die out because it just can't keep up. Or it's gonna have to move on to something else and the body kind of works in the same sort of way so it needs that rest in between to rebuild itself to become stronger all right uh, when you're talking about what was the other thing about like diet and exercise yeah like why dieting is also like going too hard on your diet while exercising a lot is well, bad too well if right? you're talking about okay or so it feels if, bad sometimes if you're talking about extremist types of diets or fad diets is what they call them right fad diets are terrible they're absolutely terrible. They, they, I think we were talking about it earlier, right? Like they're, they're macronutrients and micronutrients. And a lot of these fad diets will replace one or the other. Um, one of the macronutrients for a different macronutrient while filling up on like vegetables and other things, which is good. But vegetables, as much as they're good for you, your body's only going to process so much because it, they hold vitamins and minerals, which are consider, considered micronutrients. Now, you can get into like the whole argument of like quality of food, which is why you have to do it, but it, it still comes down to your three macronutrients. You still need to have a balanced diet, you know, of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Like, that's how we're built. That is how we have maximized ourselves through evolution. This is, yeah. So all these fat diets that want to like cut out carbs or cut out, or, well, yeah, cut out carbs and replace it with with uh, protein, like like Atkins, or cut out carbs and replace them with fats, like uh, uh, what's that? What keto, right? I mean, they're not balanced. And a lot of times, when you're pushing that that your body to move forward through intense workouts, your body's going to adapt, and you're going to feel miserable. All right, there, there are certain systems in place that your body has naturally built, you know, to pull energy from when it doesn't get enough energy from carbohydrates so again most the, the problem that most people have is regulation they don't regulate how much they eat they don't they don't uh, eat in moderation they usually overindulge and that is a um, what is that that is a natural reaction to um, from our, our old survival instincts oh, like so you never know when you're gonna get your next meal you never know when you get your next meal so our bodies literally will store the excess food like carbohydrates as subcutaneous fat because it doesn't know if it's going to it's literally like millions of years of evolution built into who we are and how we're built you know to 
ensure that we can survive, mm. right? So these fat diets, which decide to cut it out and push your body to this weird limit of like, yep, no, we're not getting carbohydrates, not getting carbohydrates, not getting carbohydrates. It is literally starving itself. And instead of moving forward in a healthy way, it does it in a unhealthy way. And then now people get like, um, especially for fat diets, they'll have like cheat days and then they'll overdo it not knowing like they're reinforcing those bad habits of, of uh, not moderating and not eating balanced and then they just keep going through this cycle back and forth and then they're spending the rest of the time during that week trying to balance out that whole overindulgence that they had um, th- from eating on the cheat day right so yeah like all that stuff does play together you know it absolutely plays together because that's literally just how the body works okay it's we're literally built that way but overworking your overwork yourself, making sure you're you're getting enough rest in between. That's why you don't usually do a, a single muscle group, or, or a lot of people switch up muscle groups throughout the week. And so it gives your body enough time to recover. Um, so instead of doing straight, 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 all arms every day, um, it's gonna it, it's gonna be detrimental to your progress. You're not gonna hit a plateau. You're actually going to decrease in your ability. Case in point, um, when I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, my old sergeant was a triathlete, so he would run, swim, and bike regularly, and he would do he would actually do triathlons. And when I got there, um, and it was me and this other guy. Uh, it's funny because he was younger than me, but they thought he was my older brother because he looks older than me. Um, <laughs> but it, uh, dude from Saipan, really cool guy. Uh, anyways, but we were not strong swimmers. And actually, I wasn't that strong of a runner either at that time, at least according to our PFTs, right? So our sergeant would actually make us run and swim like five days a week, two times a day, every day for like, uh, it was almost like two months. Mm -hmm. And we were getting worse and he didn't understand, like, he was was just getting... doing the, the NCO thing where he's just getting mad at us like why aren't you guys approving I'm like dude like we're trying it's not that we're not there with you during the workouts trying to keep up we're actually doing it but he never gave us time to recover and it wasn't until um, our unit came back and uh, I, I don't know if it was our, our combo or, or what they told us like no no now you're going to the gym we're gonna be working differently that's when we started seeing like massive improvements in our runs and our swims because now we had time to rest because again constantly breaking down those muscles in the same activity every single day especially twice a day uh, twice a day you know we would do constantly do like two days or three days which i mean absolutely can suck but i mean it happens (laughs) right but constantly doing that over and over again without rest time is not going to help you in the longer run to improve uh, the, the healthiest way, right? Couple that with a poor diet or a diet without moderation or one of these fat extremist diets. And now you have this whole recipe for, for uh, I don't want to call it failure, but I guess creating bad habits, like unsuccess. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is it, yeah, recipe for unsuccess. And people swear by, well, I lost all this, all this weight. It's like, yeah, you literally starved yourself and forced your body into a survival mode um, that it didn't need to do and all you had to do was just regulate and moderate your, your diet to begin with and moderate how much exercise and what exercise you're doing right so but yeah. you lose the wrong weight right like you can lose muscle uh, you it. can but I mean that's that's really really extreme one of the last um, the last energy systems um, or excuse me the last systems that are built into your body uh, I forget the name uh, it's 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 been a couple decades uh, for but your body will literally eat after it's done eating um, eating away fats survival mode it will put your proteins to work so it will, it will your body will literally eat its own muscle um, to survive to make sure that you have energy because you're not feeding it carbohydrates because carbohydrates are your main source of energy that's what it does right so does that that answer your question? I don't know if you have anything else for that. Yeah, well, actually, just just thinking about it, you know, like, the more you eat healthy, the more you realize you pick more healthy food, right? Mm-hmm. And the more you want to eat more healthy food. Well, I kind of, yeah. like, feeling the same way with exercising, right? The more you exercise, the more 
more you want to continue exercising every day. Like, at least I get that feeling. Yeah, and uh, I think I've, I mentioned this to you before, too. Like, when you start working out, like, learn to embrace the sun. Like, learn, learn to love that soreness and that pain because it's going to be a regular thing. Like, we're literally built to grow through adversity, right? Emotionally, physically, you know, mentally. Like, when, when we are faced with adversity, that's where we grow the most. So, this whole idea of complacency, making everything comfortable, you know, it, it doesn't help people on any level because of how we're literally built to grow. Uh-huh. Right? So... Yeah, when you're when you're bumping up to that, like, and I think I mentioned this to to you before, like, start it slow, start out with two three days a week, and then start bumping up over time, right? right? But that's just so you allow your body to adapt to go. Oh, it needs to start um, recovering faster. It needs to start um, being able to perform better, and you're literally causing yourself to get better and stronger and, and healthier along the way right but doing it like seven days a week say like your body wants to do it seven days a week yeah like take that time to rest take at least one day off right it's the same thing with stress right any sort of stress because uh that sort of stress i call it good stress when you're working out Uh uh, but you can't turn that into bad stress if it's continuous and you give it no time to rest Uh so having that bad stress will actually decrease the benefits if not renege on them and go backwards and you'll lose the benefits of your workout to begin with and then that might turn you off from it and then you're like ah it just didn't work and it's like yeah but you didn't do it properly so (laughs) yeah no wonder you're you're having such a bad time with it that's what happens consistency matters but small actions also make big habits so make it a habit to to um, have proper amount of rest right okay or at least do some sort of small, if you want to work out, like you still feel like that every every day, do something small, do some stretches on day seven to help relax, right? So then it helps your, again, it's just helping your body recover without putting it through like strenuous, intense exercise, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, balanced diet, get, your, get good rest, um, stay away from fat, extremist diets and, and plans like that, yeah. Well, thank you, JJ. Yeah, no problem. Bye. So, I think it's called glyconeogenesis. It just hit me. I'm pretty sure that's what the process is uh, for converting protein to carbohydrates uh, or to glucose or glucosamine. No. What, one of those sugar, one of those carbohydrate things. Glyconeogenesis. Um, hopefully, maybe someone can correct me if that's correct or not. But that is one of the last options for your body to maintain itself and survive. That is it.